In this video, I'm going to talk you through a typical redox titration exam question, the type we see on A-level papers. If you haven't already had a read-through, pause the video, get your head around the question, and then let's make a start. I always like to start by getting it really clear in my head what has actually happened uh, during this experiment. There is no point just jumping in and throwing numbers around because we lose track of what we're trying to achieve very, very quickly. So uh, what have they done? They've placed a coin probably in a beaker and they've added maybe 20, 30, 40 centimetres cubed of conch nitric acid. And that concentrated nitric acid, so there's my concentrated nitric acid and there's my coin. My concentrated nitric acid will have oxidized the copper in that coin to copper 2 plus. Once it's all dissolved, they will have taken all of that solution and it said it was made up to 250 centimeters cubed. So we know that that means it was placed in a volumetric flask and made up to the mark with distilled water. And now I know I have 250 centimeters cubed of solution. So all the copper that was in the coin is now in my volumetric flask. An excess of potassium iodide was added to 25 centimetres cubed of the, sim, uh, the original solution. So they have used, um, I would think, a volumetric pipette to extract 25 centimetres cubed. That has gone into a conical flask. And to that, they have also added an excess of potassium iodide solution, so KIAQ. And the job here as the iodide ions in that solution is to form iodine. So the iodide ions are oxidized to iodine. And then we can do a classic iodine thiosulfate titration with the starch indicator, because if I know how much iodine I've got, I can then work out how much copper I had to begin with. So now we're in a position to start doing some calculations. I like to run all my calculations off my equations and I do it in a very systematic way so that if I get lost at any point, I can find my way back and, and pick up the pieces again. So we know the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate and we know the volume of the titer. Uh, so I can find out the number of moles. That's always the first step in any titration calculation. So I know that the concentration is 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed. And I know that my volume is 20.5 centimeters cubed, but I'm going to have to turn that into decimeters. We know that number of moles equals concentration times volume. So that's going to be 0 0.2 times 20.50 over a thousand. So my number of moles of thiosulfate is 0 0.0041 mole when you put that into your calculator. If I know the number of moles of thiosulfate, then it's very straightforward to work out how much iodine was produced in that first reaction. Okay, so what we have here is iodine to thiosulfate. I know it is a one to two ratio. I know that I didn't have two moles of thiosulfate I only needed 0 0.0041 to complete my titration. So number of moles of iodine, 0 0.00205, exactly half. And the key here is that all of this iodine is the result of the reaction with copper ions in the first reaction. So flipping back to my original question here, and these are the equations, as I said, I like to work against. Um, I've used the volume of thiosulfate to find the number of moles of iodine. 
And this is the number of moles of iodine that came from that first reaction. So once again, if I know the number of moles of iodine, I also know the number of moles of copper ions that were in that 25 centimeter cubed sample. So from the first equation, I know that the ratio of copper to iodine is 2 to 1. Therefore, if we have uh, 0.0205 moles of iodine, I must have had 0.0041 moles of copper. And that's the number of moles of copper in that 25 centimetre cubed sample that was taken out of the volumetric flask. So it's quite straightforward. If I know how much was in a 25 centimetre cubed sample in the original solution, which was 250 centimetres cubed, I'm going to have 10 times as much. So we've got 0 0.041 moles of copper. Now, clearly, the ratio of copper 2 plus to copper is going to be 1 to 1. So that is the number of moles of copper in the coin. Now, the question asks us to find the percentage mass of copper in this coin. So I need to convert moles into mass. So, so the mass of copper in the coin is going to equal moles times the molar mass of copper. So we've got 0 0.041 times 63.5. It's really important that you always take your molar masses direct from the periodic table from, um, off the data sheet in the exam. Don't round up. Uh, so that comes to, when you plug it into your calculator, 2.6035 grams. OK, so to finish off, the percentage of copper in the coin is just going to equal the mass of copper divided by the mass of the coin, which they told us in the original question was 3.47 times 100, and that comes to 75.0%. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the description below, it takes you straight to Crunch Chemistry School, where you can access my free math skills course, complete tuition, and worksheets designed specifically to build your confidence and stretch you. Together we can do this.